given us the opportunity and the means to, to be here. We celebrated folks coming to Christ by accepting Jesus into their lives and being baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. I am so thankful that, that God has seen it fit to give us life, to be able to witness those things, but, but especially given them life to be able to obey the gospel. That is one or the only most important decision that you'll ever make. We've witnessed in the recent year, or this year rather, so many folks that have lost their lives, young, middle-aged, and old. They've had opportunities to render obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ, but have not done so, did not do so, and life escaped them. And that is a sad state of affairs when folks reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that happened in the days of Jesus Christ when Jesus came to his own and his own did not receive him. It happened to those people when Jesus went to the villages and preached the gospel. Brought the good news to them and rejected him. It happened when the disciples went to those villages as well. And they stoned them and ran them out of the cities. So sad. But we rejoice with those that do obey the gospel of Christ. This morning I'd like for us to open our Bibles to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. I want to read about a great event that if you were present, you would never forget. And you would talk about it. As a matter of fact, we're talking about it today because we haven't forgotten about it. That's how great of an event it was. That we still talk about it today. I want you to think about the last time you were outside on a beautiful spring day where enough rain had fallen to where puddles had formed. And that it was still sprinkling. And when a raindrop fell in one of those puddles, you saw the ripples. Beautiful. Or when you were on a lake fishing, a grasshopper or something moved the water and you saw the ripples. And the ripples just moved ever so elegantly and beautiful to the edge of the lake or the river. Or maybe even skipped a stone. And saw the water disturbed. And the ripples just moved. Beautiful, isn't it? This morning I'd like for us to discuss the ripple effect. The ripple effect of compassion. I want us to examine the ripple effect that we can have through compassion. Of how your compassion can affect others in so many ways that you might not even have imagined. And how an act of kindness can affect the, the lives of others in such ways that you just could not ever have dreamt of. There may be even an act of kindness that you didn't even rely, realize that you were kind that day. Affected a person in such a way that was so profound to them. That it impacted their lives in such a positive way. It reminds me of a story. Of this elderly lady that was on a fixed income. Who had just made the choice. That she was not going to purchase. Her needed medication. That was vital for her health. Because she couldn't afford to buy it. And buy her groceries. So she made the, de the decision to forego that month. The purchase of her medication so that she could buy groceries. 
knowing that if she did not take that medication for her heart, she could have a heart attack. But being whimsical about it, she said, well, at least I'll have a heart attack and be happy about it with a full belly. But she tried to look at it from a positive standpoint. So she brought, bought her groceries. And as she was counting out her money to pay, pay for her groceries, the cashier said, ma'am, don't worry about it. I'm going to pay for your groceries out of my own pocket today. And the lady protested. And she protested and the cashier said, don't worry about it, ma'am. I'll pay for your groceries today. Out of my own pocket. And this lady having dignity and honor. As most folks like her do. She continued to protest. And then she asked, why would you do this? You do not know me. And she said, because I want to. She said, no one does anything just because they want to. She said, if you must know, ma'am, is because when I was a young child, Someone paid for my grandmother's groceries one day just because. And that made such an impact in my life, when I, in my mind, when I was a little girl, that I decided that one day I would do the same if I had the opportunity. And today, I have the opportunity. And I want to pay for your groceries. So... The ripple effect of compassion allowed this woman to buy her groceries and go to the pharmacy and buy her medications for that month. You just never know, do you? How far an act of kindness and a demonstration of compassion can go. Years ago, the movie Pay It Forward came out. I highly recommend you watch that movie, Pay It Forward. It's been out long enough where you can find it for a dollar somewhere. Watch it. And adopt that, 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 that idea. So this morning as we read Mark chapter 6 and verse 30. I urge you to have the heart of compassion that Jesus had. You know, there's some people that just have that heart of compassion as if they were born with it. And there's some that, that don't have that heart of compassion, but have to learn compassion. And I would assume that the only way you can learn compassion is by being, or being on the receiving end of compassion. But whatever case might be, the best teacher of compassion is the one that over or about 2,000 years hung on the cross and shed his blood for all of us and taught us the ultimate lesson on compassion. But again, in Mark 6 and verse 30, Jesus, after having taught for several hours, it seems like. We're told in verse 30, the apostles gathered together with Jesus and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were many people coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. And they went away to, in, in the boat to a secluded place by themselves. And the people saw them going, and many recognized them and ran there, to, ran there together on foot from all the cities, and they got there ahead of them. When Jesus went ashore, 
He saw a large crowd and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. I want you to, to notice here the first time that the word compassion is mentioned in this narrative. When they heard that Jesus was there or was going to be there. The people from different cities, they ran ahead of Jesus. They beat Jesus to wherever he was going to be because they wanted to be where Jesus was. They wanted to hear him and they wanted to be around and in the area of where Jesus could be found. And when Jesus saw them, he felt compassion and notice the reason why he felt compassion. Because they were lost. They were like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep need shepherd for protection. They need shepherd to be fed. They need shepherd to be doctored. They need a shepherd to be taken care of. They need shepherd for direction and leadership. They need shepherd to be taken care a shepherd to be taken care of. And this is why Jesus felt compassion for them and began to teach them. At that very moment, what they needed the most was direction, was stability, was a sense of direction. And Jesus began to teach them and he taught them many things. And verse 35, when it was already quite late, his disciples came to him and said, This place is desolate, and it is already quite late. And basically what they're saying to Jesus is, It's late, and there's no Motel 6 around to be seen, and no one's left the light on. And there are thousands of people here, Jesus. There's not ten. They're not a hundred, but there are thousands of people and there's no bed and breakfast. And you, Jesus, are the reason why they're here. You are the cause. You are the attraction. They have come to see you. And Lord, if we talk about Jewish traditions, you have to provide for them. You see. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. Now, what kind of a host would that be? I mean, it almost sounds like Ed Rangel. When you come to my house, I'll give you something to eat, but I tell you, bring your own drinks. The disciples are saying to Jesus, before it gets dark, and you have to be responsible for their food and lodging. Send them away. You talk about being cheap. But Jesus felt compassion, didn't he? And true compassion means I'm going to take care as far and as much as I can of these sheep without a shepherd. Right? 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 I'm not going to send them away because they have no shepherd. And if they have no shepherd and I send them away, what's going to happen to them? There are many wolves. And if there are many wolves and I send them away as sheep without a shepherd, bad news. But he answered them and said, you, my disciples... You give them something to eat. And they said to him, well, shall we go and spend 200 denarii on bread and give them something to eat? He said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go look. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. He commanded them all to sit down by groups on the green grass. And they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. And he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food and broke the loaves and he kept giving them to the disciples and set before them. And he divided up the two fish among them all. 
And they all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up twelve full baskets of the broken pieces and also of the fish. And there were 5,000 men who ate the loaves. Now you might want to highlight, just for effect, the phrase 5,000 men. But in my Bible, I wrote, what happened to the women and children? Because it doesn't mention women and children. So if you were to do some calculations here, if each man had a wife, that's 10,000 people. And if each one had at least two children, that's 20,000 people that Jesus could have fed that day. Now, Jesus could have fed 20 million. But did you pick up on the word satisfied? That Jesus fed these people on a few fish and a few loaves until they were satisfied. Until they were full. Because my friends and my brethren, when Jesus gives us blessings, He gives us blessings until our cup is full and overflowing. But our cup is not overflowing until that cup has been full and pressed down and then overfull or overflowing. And it's just like some of us when we go to the buffet. We don't just get enough to feel satisfied. In other words, until we, we kind of feel like we're full. We get enough until one of the buttons on our shirt says, you better stop or it's going to become an assassin's button. They were satisfied. And it all began because Jesus felt compassion. Now let me pose this question to you. Twenty years later, if you had been a child that day, they had eaten fish and loaves that day, and 20 years later, would you still be talking about it? Would you, be, would you still be telling people about that great and wondrous, miraculous day that Jesus just put on the greatest, miraculous feast ever? Of feeding about 20,000 people with a few fish and a few loaves when He sat them down in groups of hundreds and fifties and they all ate until they were satisfied and then they picked up baskets full of fish and bread and there were still leftovers? Would you still be talking about it? There, my friend, therein, my friend, lies the ripple effect of compassion. In verse 30, Jesus had just learned that John the Baptist had been beheaded by Herod. In verse 30, 31, Jesus invites the disciples to rest at a deserted place. In verse 33, Jesus couldn't get away from the crowds. And in verse 34, he's moved with compassion and teaches this crowd. In verses 35 through 37, he feeds the multitude. And in verses 38 through 44, they're all miraculously fed. Jesus had time for people. And was willing to be inconvenienced. This is what I want us to learn. His cousin, John the Baptist, the forerunner, the one that was announcing the coming of the Messiah, had been murdered by Herod. And if Herod could have come after Jesus, he might have done so. And he wanted to go to a secluded place. He hadn't even had time to mourn the death of his cousin, but yet 5,000 people needed his help. You talk about being inconvenienced. Because he felt compassion for people. As a Christian, my friends, sometimes we won't even have time for our personal business. Because we're called into service. 
Where we serve the Lord and we serve other people. And that's compassion. And people will remember that. Remember there in, in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. And verse. Uh, verses. Um, verse 10. When Zacchaeus. Wanted to see Jesus and he climbed up a tree. And then Jesus announces in verse 10. For the son of man has come to seek and save that which was lost. That's why Jesus was all the time showing compassion. Because the people that he showed interest in were those that were lost. So he looked for those opportunities to find people that were lost. To find those that were spiritually sick. To save them. From eternal damnation. He came to look for the outcasts. True compassion ministers to the spirit. Not just the flesh. And that's where he began with these 5,000, 10,000 or 20,000 that he fed. He began by teaching them. And then he fed their flesh. True compassion requires selflessness on my part. It requires to put myself and my needs second or even last. It's not all about me. In this selfie dominated world that we live in. Narcissistic society. We need to put ourselves last. To show compassion to other people. The church, not some other organization, needs to, be, needs to bring glory to God by showing compassion to the world. And that's by bringing the word of God to save those that are lost. And God can change the lives through the ripple effect of compassion. And it begins with you. Begins with us individually and collectively. So here's my challenge, my brethren, as we end this year and begin another one. Let's be the ripple effect of compassion. Now, we are in the holiday season where people are willing to give and to drop money in buckets and maybe even be a little bit nicer to each other. Until they get in their cars and on the road. <laughs> they kill each other, right? With their words. But as Christians, we don't need a bucket to drop money into to be nice to each other. We don't need a special holiday to be nice to each other, right? We are called to be compassionate, loving, and caring every single day. So let's continue the ripple effect of compassion. And show God's blessings in our lives to others. So that we can make an impact on this world. Because this world is terrible. And we are the light of the world. The salt of the earth. We are the ones that should make the change. And we're the ones that people should say. I want to be like them. Because we have Christ in us. Christ came and gave his life for us. By showing compassion. On that cross. So that we could have life everlasting. And if you're not a Christian. You can have life everlasting. By confessing your faith. That he is a son of the living God. Let's put our song up on the screen please. By confessing your faith. That Christ is the son of the living God. And making up your mind to live a life that is dedicated to him. And not to yourself. And not to anyone else. But to him. So that each step, each step you take. Can be a step you take. In Christ. In him. And for him. And be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. As together we stand and sing. <clears throat>